possibly the most explosive idea ever to have blown the mind. Complicated unfolding process, which is embryology, is likely to have more than one effect. The majority of new mutational effects are actually deleterious. They actually make you worse. For a reason that's not difficult to see, uh, if the system is pretty well set up already, which it must be, or the animal couldn't be reproducing, any random change is very likely to be a change for the worse. Uh, it's like taking a complicated machine like a radio and removing one bit or cutting one wire inside. It, it just might make it better, but it's more likely to make it worse. So the majority of new mutations are deleterious. The majority of new mutations have more than one effect. A minority of new mutations have a beneficial effect. That's what evolution depends upon. That's the only reason why we're here. That's the reason why evolution moves in a positive direction. It's because of the minority of mutations that actually have a good effect. But since most new mutations have more than one effect, any new mutation that has one good effect is likely to have a couple of bad effects as well. Somewhere else in the body, perhaps at a different time of life. <coughs> so, imagine a new mutation that has two effects, a good one and a bad one. If it has a good effect when you're young, but a bad effect when you're old, that's fine because you reproduce when you're young and you pass on the gene before you get old enough for the bad effect to kick in. The reverse, of course, won't happen. A new mutation that has a very good effect when you're old but kills you when you're young uh, is not going to get through. Now, any genetic effect is liable to modification by other genes. So you have a major gene that has some big effect, or more than one big effect, and the details of its effects can be changed by other genes called modifiers, which, which, which affect the, um, the, the embryological process, the working out of what, what the major gene does. Now, if you go back to our gene that has two effects, one good and one bad, any modifier gene that postpones the bad effects of a major gene is likely to be favored by natural selection because the animal has had a chance to reproduce before the bad effects of the major gene kick in. Conversely, any modifier genes that influence the time of action of a mutation by making the good effects come earlier, that will be positively favored because early expression, good, good expression, increases the chance of getting passed on. So the Williams modification of the Meadow theory is that there is constant selection to postpone bad genetic effects and prepone good genetic effects. So the decay of old age is a kind of, we are, we are all dustbins filled with late-acting lethal and semi-lethal genes and filled with early-acting beneficial genes. Old age is when we pay for our gilded youth. And it's worse for males than for females because for males, competing with members of the same sex for reproductive access to members of the opposite sex is very often what it's all about. The peacock is a sort of symbol of that. The peacock is ludicrously ill-equipped to survive. This huge great fan, this great big tail, highly vulnerable to predation, makes it difficult to get off the ground. It has one good effect only, and that's to seduce females. Females, for reasons we didn't go into, like a great big tail. <laughs> so females have a much better chance of surviving than males do. Um, but any gene that makes a male very attractive to females when he's young, even at a cost of survival, is going to be favored. And so the extreme 
logical conclusion to this argument is that males will tend to die young because they, are so, because they have what it takes to flourish and thrive when they're young, but not to flourish and thrive, and in this case, be sexually attractive when they're old. Everything is a matter of economic trade-offs. To come back to that point again, you can buy advantage in one department of life at a cost in other departments of life. And I, I talked about bones being shaved earlier in my talk. I'm now talking about a trade-off between being sexually attractive and being good at surviving. Other trade-offs, um, the immune system is why most of us are still here. Uh, the, Im the immune system is a wonderful thing. It attacks invading parasites and in invading foreign bodies in a highly specific, very ingenious way. But the trade-off is that sometimes the immune system can be too trigger-happy. It has to strike a balance between attacking genuine invaders, genuinely dangerous parasites, on the one hand, and the danger of attacking the body itself on the other hand. And it's a difficult exercise in fine tuning to tune the immune system so that it recognizes invading parasites and attacks them, but does not attack the body's own cells. And autoimmune diseases, as you know, are, can be quite serious, can be quite unpleasant. These are when the immune system is too trigger happy, when the immune system actually attacks oneself. The human brain is clearly a wonderful thing. Uh, it's en enormously helpful, must have been very helpful to our ancestors to survive. But it means that the, the skull is large, difficult to give birth to. And this has pushed humans to be born earlier and earlier. Uh, and already, um, childbirth is a very difficult, a very painful, difficult procedure and can be fatal uh, in type before modern, modern medicine it frequently was. So having a big brain um, has all sorts of negative consequences on the, on the female pelvis and so on. And also it pushes us, it has pushed us the, as a species to be born earlier and earlier and hence to need prolonged parental care. So part of the trade-off for having a big brain is that we have to have a very long period of childhood where we're being educated and cared for, uh, protected by our parents. I've already mentioned the problem of walking on two legs. Uh, for some reason, there must have been great advantages in our ancestors, perhaps four or five million years ago, to rise up onto our hind legs, walk on, on two legs rather than four. That must have had advantages, but it has costs as well, uh, and we pay for it in certain structural problems and uh, lower back pain and so on. Thank you very much. Thank you.